hilarious. <laughs> Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We're going to have some fun today. This is a 1958 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud, but it's not an ordinary Rolls Royce. It is a derelict Rolls Royce. Now, if you don't know what that means, you'll find out in just a minute because it's built by Icon. It is not exactly what it seems, and that's kind of the fun thing about these derelict automobiles. Let's bring in Jonathan Ward. He's the uh, president of Icon, the president. Well, that sounds like. Quite lofty, Jim. Yeah, it does. Well, there you go. I'm the idiot in charge. So tell people what we have here. All right. So Icon is all about revisiting classic trends in a modern context, and right. the derelicts are about hiding all the work that we do. So find a vehicle with killer patina and sense of history, laser scan it, geek out on it, and modify the hell out of it, put it back together like to look like we did nothing. Right. So this was originally a six-cylinder Silver Cloud 1. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, it, it now has what? Now it's rocking an LS7. Okay. And uh, 4L85E tranny, big Brembo's, Art Morrison Sport IFS, four link rear coilovers and blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right. So what you've done is essentially lifted the body off and put a brand new yep, modern automobile on Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, electronics, the Prince of Darkness, Mr. Lucas, right. has been uh, completely eradicated. Well, the tires are a giveaway, as the wheels are. That makes you sense something is suspicious. But other than that, I mean, I used to, uh, when I worked at the Rolls dealer when I was a kid, we used to get these old girls in all the time, and they were, they were fun, you know, they were kind of cool. But I imagine this is a whole different beast, isn't it? Completely different yeah, yeah. experience. But the grace and the lines and the scale of these, right. you just, I don't know anyone who can't appreciate it. Right, the lines and the details are just magical. Well, this looks like a Rolls Royce, you know. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of fancy cars here at the garage, and the garage is not in the fanciest part of town. And whenever I would drive the McLaren or whatever, you know, these really expensive cars, all neighborhood people wave, the kids say hi. A buddy of mine came over with one of these, he paid $15,000 for it. He couldn't get it running right. So we tuned it up and I said, let's go right around the block. And people give me the finger because I'm in a Rolls Royce. Because <laughs> I look like I was there to collect the rent. I, you know, it just looked like a guy in a Rolls, you know, the, you know the, besides the great Poupon jokes and all the other stuff. That people just get mad, you know. That's kind of a funny thing. You know, my experience, though, in this one is that the funk and patina and the imperfections right. of it make people smile. And it's like a lot more approachable because you, you avoid all that social stigma baggage. Right. Now, this is a right-hand drive model. Yep. Okay, so uh, did you import it or was it always a right-hand drive model? It was always a righty, um, but it was in the U.S. since new. It actually was owned by a now defunct uh, cosmetics company, and mm -hmm. it was their, you know, pick up their executives and impress distributors right. car. Okay. And then when that guy retired, it was given to him as a gift, and then he never drove it and it sat rotting in the driveway. Oh, okay. So when we bought it, it had this in original paint, but the inside, man, the mold. We literally had to hire a hazmat team. Really? You know, like full body suits to come deal with it and strip it out because it had some highly suspect mold situation growing in it. Is there any original pieces besides bodywork, uh, steering gear, anything original to Rolls on it? Mm, about this part of the chassis. Right. So we actually built this for a great client who's in Australia. Okay. So that complicated my world because we had to build in compliance with Australian laws, which are even crazier than ours. So we had to work with an engineering consultant there. What was the law? Keep, it's a gift to keep a certain percentage of the original chassis. The, the brakes that you run have to come with certification documents. And well, I get that part, on. but you'd think if you had a more modern chassis that was... Better Safer built and, and stronger. better should be good. Yeah, but no, that doesn't always no. apply. Uh, well, that's lawyers, so you're okay. trying to talk reasonable words, Jay, and yeah. you should know better. Well, let's open the hood and see what we have underneath. Oh, yeah, good fun. I'm going to monkey with it a little bit more, too. We want to dress the engine bay to hide the LS better. Right. And uh, it's funny, I reached out to the client and said, all right, I know we've, like, blown a lot of your money, but if it was my car, there's, like, four things I would do. Yeah, it's not real impressive. I always, I prefer seeing some sort of finned valve cover. Exactly, you know? and that's, but at the same time, it depends on how the client's gonna use it. Right. If I leave this LS7 as factory delivered, 
get it serviced anywhere. Right. Everyone's immediately familiar with it. You know, if it's not going to shows where the hood's up, that's not a fact. Right. And what kind of horsepower is it making? About five and a half. Okay, versus probably what? Five and a half, but five yeah. and a half. <laughs> yeah, but back in the day, it would have been what? Probably 200 horsepower with the six. Yeah, right? on paper. Yeah, yeah. I okay. could actually feel it. Right, okay. Um, and then the, the brakes really were interesting on the stock, but now we're hydro boosted. Icon Brembo's all the way around, six piston front, four piston rear. Okay. All TIG stainless exhaust and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, not a sexy engine compartment. Yeah, Correct. As, as we remember. But, but the original focus was right. the hood's down. You're just right. rolling it and it's reliable and fast as hell and easy to service. Right, right. But now he's engaging my geekness and uh, we're going to CNC custom valve covers that hide the coils and have the vintage roll script. Right. The wheels are missing a pinstripe in, in my odd brain, so we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And the shifters are just generic -y, you know, And did you make these wheels or what? No, we work with our buddies at Circle Racing on these. Okay. And then we CNC the custom roll center caps. And what size tire is that? Um, these are, I'm not that smart. 17s? They're good years. Well, they're 18s, 18s. for the big old Brembos. Okay. And they're... 295.50s. Okay, because I always remember a lot more tire, yeah. less wheel, you know, for definitely for better. That's ride a quality. challenge for us with the derelicts. Wheels right. are always the biggest challenge to yeah. keep the continuity but fit yeah. the big brakes. Okay, all right. Well, let's see. We still got the engine compartment there, and you got your windshield washer fluid. Yeah, we kept that original. It's just too cool not and to. And that's all original. Of course, the flying lady. Yes, of course. Uh, very nice. And then on the inside, though, in contrast to the exterior, we geeked out and fully restored it. Albeit, as usual, I took some liberties. So I'm a right. big leather geek, so we had the leathers made right. for us. Okay. And I just didn't have the, I didn't have the heart to do the Mouton rugs. I just don't get it. I yeah. The dead yeah. sheep party. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we extensively we did all the hardwood and the inlay and all that, and then we modified the heck out of the dash. Okay. You'll probably know, being the geek that you and I are, but most people would never notice it, but extensively modified for in-dash AC and defrost and cruise control and blah, blah, blah. And the gauges are no longer stock. They're just the fascia of stock. Right. And then all video electronics hiding okay. behind them. Did this year have the round balls for the air conditioner, the circular? Originally? No, this one had no AC originally. That's right. I don't yeah. think in 58, I'm trying to remember if Rolls Royce had air conditioning. I'm not expert enough to say, yeah, I but remember, I'll tell you this one yeah. didn't. Yeah, I mean, that was the one place where America really beat Rolls Royce. You know, in 1949, I always contend the Cadillac was the best car in the world. Mm -hmm. It had air conditioning, it had electric windows or power windows. It had automatic transmission. It had a V8. It had Power CD, valve. man. Yeah, that's Power starting CD. to really get And Rolls-Royce was six-cylinder with a stick. Well, look you know, at the, yeah. you know, it happens again and again. The more yeah. staid traditional companies, oh, that's nonsense. You right, know, right, yeah. Don't yeah. evolve until forced. Yeah, very nice, very nice. I like the leather. Even that leather looks like it could be sort of original. Yeah, that was the idea. And it's uh, organic enough that it is going to scratch and age and catch up with the exterior. And we kind of purposely did that as well. <laughs> Steering column was a challenge. That, so that's nothing stock anymore, but we What was the challenge on the steering the column? Because it seems like the V8 is actually smaller than the six. Was yeah, there no it room? It's lower. No, it was more of a cosmetic, a design challenge. Yeah. On the inside, you know, we needed to change and improve the ergonomics from stock. You know, we're racking pinion and all that now. So we go to Borgensen joints and collapsible. But that's actually from the hot rod world, and then we just monkeyed with it a little bit and machined the coupling to keep the old school. I like those school bus wheels. So how did this work? Did the guy from Australia, did he come here? Did he call you? I want to find an old Rolls, or you found it, and then you sold the idea to him? How does that work? It works all those different ways, but in this case, uh, Justin reached out to us and said, you guys are nuts. I love your derelicts. I want to do one. My brother's like all up in the classic Rolls Royce clubs right. and I want to screw with them. Right. So right. I want to do a cloud, it's okay. got to be right hand drive, it's got to be beat. So yeah. we search down the car for him. That's right, you have to be, you can't even bring a left hand drive into a street. Well I guess you can if it's 25 years yeah, old. Yeah, but even but then they make it super difficult. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, okay. 
Well, this will certainly get you kicked out of the Rolls Royce Club. Exactly. If you show That's up with exactly this, like, get out, get out. Off with your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like going to a Vincent meeting with a chopper. You know, you, yeah, <laughs> exactly. you can't. Yeah, I mean, so really nothing was done to the body at all, no, even at no attempt at to repair the rust. Yeah, on the bottom side, there was some concerning rust. Frankly, I have a love-hate thing with British cars. Yeah. I generally love the aesthetic, but I find the execution kind of sucks, in my opinion. So the way the body's built, you know, in two layers is just crazy. It's all hand fettled there. Well, I, yeah. that's no excuse for not having drain plugs and having right. two layers full right, of right. pine needles. Right. So we did more rust repair on the bottom side than we thought we were going to do, but we're very careful not to do the exterior. So okay. It's hard to hide all the work that we do. All doing. right. Maybe we should put this up on the lift and show people yeah, what it yeah, looks yeah. like before we Super take it cool, away. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's take it next door. We'll put it up on the lift and then we'll take it for a ride. Excellent. Well, we got it up on our sterile Coney lift so you can see what the chassis looks like. This is where obviously all the money goes. It's certainly, yeah. not, certainly not on the body <laughs> or the paint. Okay, so let, let's start from the back. What do we got here? We got our Brembo brakes. Yep. And what, 18 inch wheels? That's what yep, we have? Yeah, 18s. Okay. And then even further back, this takes a lot of time but really helps us to like refine and evolve the road noise and right. protect the body. So this is all heat cured polyurea. Okay. And then we made our own tank so we could do a proper in-tank pump and baffles and all that. Okay, and this is our uh, chassis yeah. here. Just to make more we added a couple Swimble. body mounts. Yeah, we learned yeah. to do that. Yeah. Well, this is a nice piece here. Look at this. This is a lot more rigid, certainly, than the original ever was. Yeah, yeah. ten times. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we use that for routing exhaust, but on this one we had room outboard. Yeah. So we did the TIG mandrel stainless. And what do we have here? This is what? Emergency brake? Is yeah, that? it's this new product called E Stop. So yeah. a lot of times we struggle with like the, the math from the fulcrum of like an original lever to modern right. brakes, and the parking brake is never quite right. Right. So this now is electric fed worm drive, and it pulls the heck out of that, and it's just been perfect. But we still hook it up to the original like underdash or right. stomp with a micro switch. Because that's right, originally did they have a park position? I don't think they did. No, they didn't. So you had to pull the emergency yeah. brake. But, it has right. a, but the transmission also has a yeah, park. Yeah, now we have okay. a proper park, but a okay. proper parking brake. look break. at these <laughs> traction bars here. Yeah, uh, and it gives us a lot of control and tunability. Cool. Yeah. And then the chassis is all military spec one right. powder coated and etched. And I'm a big fan of these hydro boost systems more and more. Okay, for the brakes here? Yeah, so instead of using vacuum, right. we're actually pulling energy from the power steering pump. Okay. And it was originally used like in 18 wheelers and big trucks. Yeah. And then now uh, Talon and a couple other firms have really refined. So you get the proper brake pedal and throw you through the windshield. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it just. No seepage, no oil anywhere. Yeah, because there's no paper cork British gaskets anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> really helps out. Well, I mean, this is a 60-year-old car. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And this is that whole new front end up here. Yeah, yeah, so we've laced it in, but from about where your head is forward is all new 240 wall mandrel bent. Now, what do we have? Is this, this is your brake line, right? Yep. Boy, that looks dangerously close to sag. You know, sag. I'd have to say you're right. I should yeah. probably do a spring retainer to hold that up. Yeah, that looks like you come along and you grab yeah, something. Yeah, good fun and you pull a brake line out of there. Uh, so we still have the car because we're doing shakedown, so that's right. a good point of something that we've called. What have you got through. on the other side? got the same thing on the yep. other side. Yeah. Hey, at least I'm symmetrical, right? Now, why a plastic brake line versus a... It's plastic shrouded stainless oh, underneath oh, the okay, plastic. Oh, okay, okay, So it's kind of double trouble there. Gotcha, gotcha. And then we plumb the whole system in stainless. Okay, well, nicely done. And of course, custom, so you don't use, you just use the the Rolls grill is no Rolls radiator. Anymore. Correct, yeah, we CAD design our own radiator to be compliant. And, and that's a fairly way. small radiator, right? but I guess these are just so efficient. They now. are, and that's the, we use Griffin, and they have a really good dense core that really helps us get away with less real estate, but keeping right. the capacity right. And what steering rack is this? Well, this is the Flaming River rack and pinion, and it's the 20 to one ratio. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. We're starting to use those BMW racks because yeah. they're 16.8 or something, and they're really well done. Just started oh, playing with boy. those. Nice big brakes. I love brakes, and the Brembo partnership yeah. for us has just been killer. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Well, we saw what it looks like on there the you go. on the outside, underneath. Let's see what she does on the road. Let's flog her.
good. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. You know, the thing they used to hate about these is how boaty they were. Yeah. But with this chassis, it's it's really, it handles very well, and you've got this panoramic view, and... Yeah, I love this you know, big greenhouse. Yeah, big greenhouse, and... Yeah, I had one of these stock when I was a teenager. It was yeah. like always one of my dream cars. I was like 17, I think. Yeah. And I only kept it for like 30 days because I loved the look, but you had to be a martyr to it beyond yeah, loving yeah, the look. Yeah, yeah, And I just, I never had the patience for that. I'm surprised you did the dash. I would have thought that you would have kept it. Uh... It was too screwed up. Yeah, for me. yeah. Yeah. And then we had the right guy to do it up and do it right. Plus, Is this Madeira Concepts? Yeah. Yeah, don't they do wonderful work? Brilliant work. And then yeah. like adding the AC, adding the different yeah. panels that didn't exist. That was another thing. If we went ahead and decided to do the wood, it gave us way more design freedom. So Jay, if you were ever to build a derelict car, yeah, what would you build? I'm not sure what I would build. Hmm. What would I build? You know, this is pretty good, actually. I mean, I always liked this body style, but, uh, you know, they were just not very good to run on the street. You know, yeah. they slow and cumbersome and, you know, if the exit ramp says 30 and you're doing 31, yeah, 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 yeah. tires is, you know what I mean? Come on, you know. That gets super squirrely in a hurry. Yeah. I mean, I like the fact that you've kept the original instruments. Yeah, they're Or beautiful. the original looking instruments. Because yeah. to me, that's the, half the fun of the old car. You know, a lot of times guys show up with stuff and I can't tell yeah, it's them. it's like mail order gauges and yeah, bits and pieces. Yeah, it's all yeah. the, you know. Steering is very nice. I mean, it's... It, it's so unlike any roles I've ever given. I feel like it was, there used to be a TV show in the 60s called Burke's Law, mm. where he was like a really wealthy socialite that became a cop, and he drove around on a Rolls Royce to catch criminals. And, and this would be perfect for that. Well, it's funny, because this is what a Rolls Royce looks like to people. This is the shape they know. Even though this car hasn't been produced in 60 odd years, it's instantly recognizable. Yeah. Whereas a modern one, you go, what? Oh is, that, oh, oh, is that the role? Oh, oh, you know. Yeah, these are just iconic in the purest yeah. sense. Yeah, totally. I mean... Hey, get a little rubber on the rolls. How's that? A little chirp on second gear there. Very good. Or was that third gear? That was third, yeah. That was third You don't get downright squirrely from first to second. Yeah. Third, it does a little hop. It uh, handles... Hilarious for a little yeah. Big I mean, roll. you can you can hit it pretty hard through turns, and it really glues. <laughs> I know it does. It doesn't. I'm just expected to hit my head on the glass and it's <laughs> leaning over. No, it's 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 very funny. You know, this might be my favorite derelict that you've done, actually. I'd say mine too, but I'm kind of guilty of saying that every time I finish one, it's my favorite, and then I'm yearning to do the next one. Yeah, yeah, I know. The only thing that drives me nuts with my one-offs like this, right? They're all prototypes in essence, right? right. Throw many hours in engineering and everything, yeah. but at the, at the, there's always something that I want to do it again and redo, but, but I never want to repeat the same car twice. But if somebody showed up with one of these, would the second one be cheaper to do now that you yeah, know it? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. There's a lot learned in the process. Yeah, yeah. But again, I try and avoid that. Like, yeah. th there's so many cars I want to geek out and do, and we do so few that as a brand, like, I want each one to say something different, right, show something right, yeah, different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Okay, those brakes, those Brembo's kick in. Very nice. Did you ever think of putting the full wheel cover on? We did, but since it's a, f you know, well, you had a cap and then you had a beauty ring, right, basically. Right. And the math didn't work out going to an 18. Because when I put the big wheels on my 55 Bureau, we spun our own hubcaps. Yeah. So made it look like, uh, so it looked fairly stock. I but, rendered it and it just looked weird. Yeah. By doing the body color wheel, it seemed, at least in the rendering, better at hiding the scale yeah. of the wheel. 
I've also been curious to try those, uh, that new wheel company that does like a 19 or whatever, but two inches of it is a simulated white wall. So it looks like a steel wheel plus a oh, white yeah. wall. I haven't tried those yet. Not Lamar, no. That's no, the... not Lamar. Oh, I love Lamar's. Yeah, yeah. Why, this is, this is so unlike any Rolls Royce you've ever driven. Uh, you know, here's something I had said in, in a couple of episodes. Let's take this up in the freeway and see how it cruises. That, uh, this is my favorite Icon car so far. The 53 Buick is great. I love the wagon. But for some reason, uh, you know, it's got everything you want in a Rolls Royce. Big, comfortable, but not slow and ponderous. I mean, it really handles. It really stops. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Come on, let's give it a shot. Let's do it. Let's see what she does. Aerodynamically, this thing must be a brick. Jesus. <laughs> totally. The one thing I still have to figure out, the ashtrays in the rear seat yeah. cannot cope with the torque of the LS. Oh, you mean they fly So on. full throttle, the ashtrays just go flying. That's funny. And they're beautiful. They're like, I don't know if they're Bakelite or what they are, but... We're gonna try some magnets epoxied on the backside. Yeah, yeah. The, clothes. the glove box, I just gave up and keep it locked. This is my favorite icon car. This thing just makes me laugh. You know, having driven these back in the day and when I was a kid, they're just so. I mean, they're fun to sit in, they're luxurious, but they're just so boaty, you go like this. And to have something that handles and is, is fast is really funny. It makes me smile every time I put my foot in it. And the nice thing about Jonathan's work is he places all these rubber seals here. So the car is really quiet, isn't it? It's not whistling and, you know, you can run 80, 90 miles an hour with this. It's got, it's got so much power that it's, that it's really, really a lot of fun. Just, Jonathan, nice work. Thank very you, cool, very cool. Glad to yeah, this here. is... Until he comes up in the next Icon car, this is my favorite. See you guys next week.